Well, hi there. This is a snake. And recently we did a video covering all of the snakes. And there were so many snakes to discover that it became a long video, longer than this girl. And that was even before we got to the biggest group of snakes that there is, the Colubroides. The Colubroides includes the family Colubridae, but I don't want you to confuse the two. This is a Colubroid snake. And so is this. And so is this. And so is this. As it turns out, the Colubroides comprise about 85% of all of the snakes. So it didn't seem right to glaze over them, if for no other reason than that it includes some of the most dangerous and awesome of all snakes. There are many subtle anatomical features that differentiate the Colubroides from the host of other groups that we have discussed so far. For example, the Colubroides lack the right carotid artery that delivers blood to the head. And males have little fleshy spines covering their hemipenes. But unless you are examining dissected specimens, or make a habit of regularly inspecting the hemipenes of all of the snakes that you encounter, most of these will be difficult to observe. But as we noticed in the last video, almost all of the snake lineages have legs. Snakes have legs unless they don't. Well, this lineage, the Colubroides, lack legs. They aren't the only lineage without legs, but if you find a snake, any type of snake, the odds are good that it is in the Colubroides. And if it lacks all leg vestiges, then you almost certainly have a member of this group. Though it wouldn't hurt at all to, you know, watch this video to familiarize yourself with the other possibilities. And because over 85% of all snake species are in this lineage, it makes sense that people are generally surprised to discover that there are snakes with legs at all. The most distantly related family to the rest of the Colubroides. In fact, so distant that there is some dispute about whether it should be included or not, is the family Xenodermidae. These are a family of snakes found in Asia, all measuring less than one meter in total length, with most under two feet. They are secretive, nocturnal snakes found in moist forest habitats. Though it is a poorly known family in general, you may be familiar with the dragon snake, Xenodermis javanicus which belongs to this family. And it has to be one of the most radical looking of all snakes, though it certainly does have some competition in the rest of the Colubroides. The next most distantly related family would be the family Pareidae. These are also from Southeast Asia with one subfamily in India. Most are active predators with many feeding primarily on snails. They even have asymmetrical jaws, which assist in feeding on snails, which themselves are asymmetrical. Worldwide, about 95% of snails whirl in the same direction. They are right-handed, or dextral. Only about 5% are left-handed. Sinister. But in the range of these snakes, about 12% of the snails are left-handed, likely due to the fact that left-handed snails are harder for these snakes to eat. The next most distantly related family within the Colubroides is possibly my favorite family of snakes, period. The Viperidae. And why are the vipers my favorites? Probably because they are so incredibly rad. For one thing, these are the first group that we have discussed with deadly venom, that they can inject into prey to immobilize, kill, and digest it. And that venom is delivered through a pair of movable fangs that fold when not in use, allowing them to be much longer than those of other snakes, even other snakes that have fangs. Look at those things. It also means that they can swing into a more forward position so that the snake does not need to get a good bite to envenomate. They almost spear stuff with their fangs. They store their venom in a pair of venom glands behind the eye that gives their head a very recognizable arrowhead shape. That's just glorious. And one group, the pit vipers, have well-developed heat pits. These function similarly to the pits of the boas and pythons, except there are only two located on the l'oreal scales between the nostril and the eye, and they're called l'oreal pits. They are used to detect infrared light, which is emitted generally by things that are warm. Thus, they effectively have heat vision due to these l'oreal pits. Vipers are found on every continent except Australia and Antarctica, though Australia has a snake that is insanely viper-like, but isn't, and we'll go into that very soon. 
Most of the vipers are ovoviviparous, retaining the eggs and giving live birth, though some do lay eggs. This family includes some of my absolute favorite snakes, such as the Bushmasters that we found in the Peruvian Amazon, but also rattlesnakes, gaboon vipers, eyelash vipers, the amazing spider-tailed horn viper, copperheads, cottonmouths, and rhinoceros vipers, just to name a few. I'd love to make a whole video just about this family. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. And if you're enjoying this video so far and would like to see more like it, please subscribe and consider checking out our Patreon for even more awesome snake content and to make more videos like this one possible. The next most distantly related family is the family Homolopsidae, the Indo-Australian water snakes. This is a very unusual family that includes the tentacled snakes that we discussed on our list of the weirdest pet reptiles that you could get. All members of this family are mildly venomous. And this family includes the only snakes known to dismember their prey before swallowing it, as some tear apart crabs with their coils in order to make them more manageable to consume. The remaining snake families are all more closely related to one another than they are to any snake we have discussed to this point. And this remaining clade itself contains two big clades, the Colubroidea and the Elapoidea. Do not confuse these clades with the families Colubridae or Elapidae, though those families are contained within these two clades. The Colubroidea is sometimes argued to contain around five families, though most of the time those five are all considered to be part of the single family Colubridae. In the past, this family was basically a garbage bin for all legless oddball snakes. But a lot of recent work has removed the unrelated snakes and made it into a proper clade, though it is still the largest of all families, containing well over 200 genera found on every continent except for Antarctica. Most are non-venomous, though there are a few with medically significant venom like the boom slang and the keelback snakes, uh, which are also poisonous, no big deal. This group also includes snakes like garter snakes, rat snakes, hognose snakes, king snakes, false water cobras, mangrove snakes, vine snakes, indigo snakes, bull snakes, and on and on. The reality is that if you're thinking of a snake that you could name before you saw these videos that doesn't have front fangs or back legs, it's probably in this family. We could easily make a whole video or even multiple videos just about this clade. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. Within the Elapoidea, the most distantly related family to the rest is the family Pseudospididae. This is a very small family of snakes from Africa and Asia, one of which, the mole snake from Africa, grows to two meters in length, gives live birth to huge litters, frequently larger than 50, and notoriously bites like crazy. The remaining two families are much larger. The family Lamprophiidae is one I only discovered recently, as it contains the African house snakes, which were brought to my attention by Garrett Hardell of Reach Out Reptiles. I'd like to go see him and his extensive collection of Lamprophiid snakes, and that may be possible thanks to our supporters on Patreon. If that is the kind of thing you would like to see us do, or you would like to see more videos like this one, please consider checking out our Patreon. In addition to the African house snakes, the family Lamprophiidae also contains one of the coolest and most terrifying of all snakes, the stiletto snake. The stiletto snake really doesn't look like too big of a deal. They actually look basically exactly the same as this black African house snake. Their venom causes necrosis, which you don't want as it may cost you a finger, but death is very unlikely from a stiletto snake bite. So what makes them so terrifying? Well, it might be the fact that they have ginormous, highly mobile things that they can protrude from the mouth and reach around and get you even while the snake has its mouth closed. They are so amazing. And there's really no safe way to handle them because even if you have them behind the head, they'll still get you. Most of the Lamprophiid snakes, though, are not venomous. They are found mostly in Africa, but also in Asia and Europe. And the last group of snakes that we have to discuss may not be able to envenomate you with its mouth closed. It might not contain the largest of all snakes, have the fastest strike, or have the longest fangs, but it is a group that kills the most people. It contains the most venomous of all snakes, the inland taipan, the longest of all venomous snakes, the king cobra, and the fastest snake in the world, the black mamba. And while most have short fixed fangs that make envenomation more difficult than it is for vipers, they are much more athletic than their mobile fanged cousins. I would rather have to catch 
a hundred rattlesnakes than deal with just one mamba. And I must say that dealing with the longest viper in the world, many hours away from the nearest medical facility, was nowhere near as terrifying as handling the longest member of this family only minutes away from a great hospital. So the final group that we have to cover is the family Elapidae. And what a way to finish. I was fortunate enough to be able to catch and interact with multiple species of coral snakes during my recent trip to the Amazon. Elapids are found mostly in the southern hemisphere, but are on every continent except Antarctica and Europe. They're even out in the ocean, like the one we found on the island of Niue. They are very prevalent in Australia. And earlier I mentioned that there are no vipers in Australia, but then I remembered this snake, the Death Adder. This is a heavy-bodied, slow-moving ambush predator with long, movable fangs and elliptical pupils. They are ovoviviparous, giving live birth, unlike most elapids. This is clearly a viper, but Australia has no vipers. The Death Adder, for all of its similarity to the vipers, is an elapid. This is an example of convergent evolution. And what an example it is. Death Adders are not vipers. And if that isn't bad enough, king cobras are not true cobras. And neither are forest cobras. So I think we might need a whole video just about the elapids. And, and maybe just the cobras, since there are over 30 different species. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. And that concludes our tour of all of the snake families. What group should we cover next? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. In addition to the African house snakes, so I had to put two of those in this one video, didn't I? Two what? Uh, Pitches for Patreon? Yeah, yeah, he did. Hmm. Boy, I am dedicated. Mm -hmm. Pitching. I just, please, please support us on Patreon. <laughs> Highly mobile things that they can protrude from the mouth even while it's closed and reach around and get you even while the snake has its mouth closed, which I already said, so let me put that differently.